offer up a few tips and tricks on how to make your gluten-free pasta. Um, maybe, I don't want to say, I guess better. We'll see. Once I get through this, you can make an opinion on how I'm, how, how I'm affecting your gluten-free pasta. Um, gluten-free pasta is pretty easy to find, um, and the taste, I think, is pretty similar to wheat pastas. But um, the process of making it is a little bit tricky because these pastas are a little, um, the flowers go, that go into it are a little more delicate. So um, I know this sounds really stupid, but always read and follow the directions on the bag or the box of pasta. Um, don't assume that corn pasta is the same as brown rice pasta and that brown rice pasta is the same as quinoa pasta. So you really need to be um, to look into <laughs> the cooking instructions, and I would read it the night before because some pastas um, call to be soaked all night, and then you briefly boil them, cover them, and take them off the heat. So everyone's a little bit different. So I would definitely look into what um, your brand recommends doing. Um, also, wheat pasta always yields more than gluten-free pasta does. My rule of thumb for wheat pasta was if I wanted two cups, I made a cup, but with um, gluten-free pasta, if you want two cups, you need to make two cups. Now, you know, this could be give or take, you know, uh, a little bit on each side, but that is kind of my, you know, quick and easy uh, tip for how much pasta to cook, how much dry pasta. Um, again, cook what you need. Uh, gluten-free pasta doesn't freeze or reheat quite as well as um, wheat-based pastas. I'm really not that picky, so I often do that, but if you have a really sensitive palate, I would cook what you need, and then if you're having leftovers that go over pasta, to cook more pasta um, uh, in that sitting. Um, let's see, uh, you salt the water in gluten-free pasta just like you do in wheat-based pasta. When it comes to boil, generously salt the water. Um, don't overcook gluten-free pasta. Unfortunately, you don't have the same kind of freedom to kind of walk away from the kitchen. You really need to check it. The minimum amount it says, you need to go in and check it because if you overcook it, it gets really mushy and can kind of fall apart. So I always make pastas and then like whatever the minimum amount is, pull the pasta out right away, taste it. Um, and then once it's finished, I um, take it out and run really cold water over it once I drain the hot water off. Most people probably do this with their wheat pastas um, anyway, but just something to think about so your pasta does not keep cooking. Um, Let's see here. Um, oh, also, if you're adding noodles to a soup, do it at the very, very end. Gluten-free pasta doesn't really take to simmering or boiling for a long amount of time, so do everything else first and then add the pasta last. And um, I personally really like char pastas. I pretty much cook them the exact same way I cook regular pasta. I don't have any problems. Um, I think the taste is delicious. It's nutritionally sound. I totally recommend char. Um, most people in the gluten-free community choose tinkiata pasta, and that is, um, they recommend cooking it, I believe, for like boiling it for three minutes, taking it off the heat, and covering it for 17, um, and then it cooks in that, uh, uh, while it's off the heat, um, and that way it doesn't get mushy and stays al dente. Um, and some people even say no matter what the direction says, you should always do the cook 20 minutes, pull off the heat for 17 to do this like 20-minute cooking process. It's really up to you. <clears throat> I don't ever do that um, unless I'm actually using tinkiata pasta or the actual box calls for me to do it. Um, but again, I mostly I mostly make char pastas. And I am personally not a fan of corn pastas. Um, they just the texture is a little different to me. But um, char pastas, I'll probably say this in char is probably a corn pasta. But um, Char pastas seem to be totally normal. Any person I've served that to who is not gluten free has never, not has not been able to taste a difference. Um, again, it's not my method of choice to to cook it and pull it off the heat and let it sit. But you know, it's up to you what brand um, you use and how they recommend cooking it. So um, comment and let me know what your favorite brand of gluten free pasta is, or if you have any strategies I haven't covered here. I know it can be a little tricky, but. Hopefully these are some tips and tricks to make your kitchen um, just as normal as it was before. So I hope everyone's doing well out there. Thanks so much for watching. As always, it's from Have Not to Have and Gluten-Free Dining.